Hey guys, welcome back. Sorry if you can hear my dog because she's with me for this episode. And I'm sorry if you can hear the rain because the rain is also with me for this episode. Today I want to talk about um, how the fuck you're meant to cut off friends or recognize when a friendship is just no longer healthy for you or just no longer serving you because those are two different things that require different reactions in my opinion. So let's talk about it because oh my fucking god has it been on my mind lately. So I'm just going to preface with this because this is one of the experiences that made it so abundantly clear to me why sometimes you do have to end relationships even if you kind of would rather not end them or something. Why sometimes it can be beneficial to just be gone from somebody, right? Even if you don't realize it at the time. So the last time that I had like a tumultuous ending of a relationship with someone, um, I was remember because I think back to the moment it ended so often and attribute the moment to most of what I would consider my success now if I feel successful at university or at work wherever I feel successful it couldn't have ever happened if I didn't have that heartbreak so let me explain we I'd ended this relationship and it was a very bad ending and we had been basically like it had got so messy we were like in the mud right and like both crying or like they were crying i was trying to console them because i'm fucking mentally ill and i remember what happened was so bad and so final for me that it was like i wasn't gonna go back and fuck my ex ever i wasn't ever gonna be friends with this person it wasn't gonna be that we were you know even unblocked in each other's phones for me that last conversation i was having with this person i knew in my head this is the last time me and this person will speak there's not going to be communication after this you know i'm once i drive away i'm gone and so it took me like two hours trying to ask every question i could think of trying to say every fuck you i could get out my mouth before i was ready to depart from from this person because it was abrupt right did i didn't see it coming so when i'm driving away and i'm like oh my god like i really am never ever gonna speak to this person again or see this person again I remember thinking this is like the end of the world like this is awful like this is my whole foundation of my life is gone because like this person had such a big role for me and I spent like almost all my time with them so I was like what the fuck am I getting like what is my life now like where am I going what am I doing and I remember driving home thinking I'm gonna have to quit my job I'm so distraught I cannot possibly go to work tomorrow and I can't go to work the day after that I was like I'm gonna have to quit my job and then I remember thinking I think I'm gonna drop out of uni and move to the other side of the world because I, I can't be here I cannot cannot be around this person I can't risk seeing this person at the store do you know what I mean I was like I have to leave I, I physically cannot stay here and now it's funny because I think back to that day where I thought my life was just over and I realize in that very second I said goodbye to that person I opened up a door to wealth a door to happiness a door to every single person that is in my life now I felt completely powerless in the situation recently this same person reached out and told me to stop talking about them and I considered it for an extended period of time. I thought, man, you know what, it has been a while. And it had initially been I, I wanted to um, make amends because I recognized that I, I have power in the situation I'm in and I have empathy. So I was like, okay, well, you know what? It will probably affect them less. I don't, know, I don't know if it's affecting them. I don't know if they've ever seen a video of mine. You know what I mean? I didn't know what position they were in. So I was like, I wanna make sure they're comfortable. I asked if we could see each other. Then they said, you know, you need to stop talking about me in, in videos, blah, blah, like I don't want to be in the content. And I thought, you know, for, for, for almost a whole year, this person kind of completely disarmed me. Like they told lies, they told stories, they dehumanized me almost completely. And I couldn't say anything. They had the microphone and I was so incredibly silent. I didn't post on my social medias. I didn't. I didn't speak. I literally sat there and let them because I was completely powerless in the situation. And the lies that they kind of told, everyone just sided with them. Their story was the story. And the lies they told were quite outlandish and they were extremely hurtful. And when everyone is believing something about you, you begin to question, am I crazy? D did I really do that? Did I really make this person feel this way or make this person act this way like wh am I not seeing the faults in my own behavior because when 10 people are telling you that you're a bad guy you think maybe I am a bad guy but it was never fair because it was never true and and when they told me you know stop talking about me I I as a normal person thought okay fair enough but then it 
I got so angry over the next week and I couldn't figure out why the fuck I was angry. Do you know what I mean, bugs? I couldn't figure out where the anger was coming from. And then I listened to some old videos of me talking to my own self, basically just like in my camera roll from the time when this was all going on. And it was me explaining in detail, details that you forget over time, what was going on, what was happening, what was being said, what was being done. And I thought, oh my God. So you took my voice and you buried me under lies and you caused me distress for that long. But I can't sit here and, and be truthful. And here's the thing, I wouldn't do it if it was gonna cause them harm. Do you know what I mean? Like I would never give any information about, uh, out about the person or specifics about the situation. And I think the only people who could possibly have an inkling as to who I'm talking about would be people who live locally to me or locally to that person, do you know what I mean? But they know that shit anyway. You know, you didn't, they didn't keep it quiet at the time they ran their fucking mouth, so let me run mine, do you know what I mean? Anyway, I often think back to that moment when I thought everything, I thought I was fucking done for. I was like, I have to start basically completely fresh. Like, I was suddenly on block one. But what I didn't realise was I was on block one of... A completely new chapter. I thought I'd gone back to the fucking start. I hadn't. I'd, I'd literally entered a new realm. And something I believe very strongly in is that you have to be a match for certain experiences, right? You have to, um, you have to make yourself compatible with blessings from the universe in order to accept them. Sometimes people are going to be blockages to you being approachable by the universe. If that, if that makes any sense. Like, so there's people that I'm just like oh, I think I've outgrown you, like, I just, I think we've gone separate ways, kind of thing. Maybe it's not outgrown, maybe it's just, we're just really different now than we were before. Maybe you've fucking outgrown me, I don't know, but something isn't meshing and we're not really feeding each other, you know, what's the point of us uh, hanging around each other so much? And then I think there's the opposite side of it, where someone is definitely dragging you down making you feel some kind of negative way that you shouldn't be feeling so lately i've been dealing with the latter i have a, a, a friend who okay actually this is kind of like and it, i wouldn't talk about it if it was current because i'd be worried that someone might get their feelings hurt but this is a person who is not in my life anymore but was recent recently ish in my life and i've been thinking about it non-fucking-stop like every day lately so i'm gonna talk about it so this person was a relatively good friend of mine some people you love because they're like blood, right? Or you've just, you just love some people unconditionally, I believe. And this was one of those people where I was kind of like, we have our faults in our friendship, but it's not the kind of friendship where we've met recently or we're super involved with each other, actually. We're just long-term good friends. I like you. We're not super, super close. But every time I would see them, and I'd often see them in a group setting, there would just be comments made, like 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 snide comments. And I didn't know if they were intentionally to be snide or if they almost couldn't help but say shit. Like it was like they couldn't bite their tongue. Like they felt like they felt a resentment for me almost, and it would just fall out their mouth. Do you know what I mean? And I was ignoring it and ignoring it and ignoring it. And I was also giving them a little bit of kind of space because I recognize that maybe people can feel jealous. I don't mean to sound big headed when I say that, but I understand that I have something that a lot of people want and there's nothing wrong with that. Like people can be jealous of, oh, you earn income and you don't work a nine to five. That's something to be jealous of. I would be jealous of that if I didn't, you know, experience that right now. Like my income, I make income off of these podcasts, off of these YouTube videos. Do you know what I mean? Like that is soft and that is an easy life. And I completely empathize with anybody who is working. Like I, up until like five months ago, this wasn't my life. So I, it's not like it's a fucking faint thought in my head of like, oh yeah, it must be hard. Like, no, that was me as well. This is new to me. So I can completely understand where that feeling could come from. So I wasn't like taking out on the person or being like, oh, you're toxic. Do you know what I mean? I was just giving them space. But it was just, it got to a point where I was like, the, the comments and everything got to a point where I was like, I genuinely think you're making me unmotivated and you're almost making me dislike what I do. And I don't know, I, I, I do believe in an evil eye. I believe in the evil eye, but I just, I don't think you can really... I don't know, I mean, from a cultural standpoint, I'm probably getting this all wrong, right? I feel less inclined to feel threatened 
by jealousy when it's or by resentment or by hatred when it's from someone that isn't close to me but when it's from someone that I have in my bedroom that I let touch me that I let wear my clothes that I let use my face wash that's when I feel like it can get to me and it's out of my control a little bit so I don't I, there has to be a point where I'm like you can't be in my space anymore and it kind of got to the point with this person where I was like I don't think you like me I don't actually think that you like me. I don't know why you're insisting on being around me because you don't say nice things to me. I can imagine what you say when I'm not in a room and I don't think it's much better than what I mean. You know what I mean? Like, and this person was someone who would talk about other people all the time. And that's, that's the number one red flag for me. I don't have friends like that. That is a strict no-go. Like me and my super fucking close friends that I've been friends with for like 10 plus years, say what you want, bitch. I will listen. You know what I mean? Like there's probably validity behind your statements. But when it's someone that I've not, I've known you for a long time, but like you're not like an old timey friend and you're talking shit about people that don't affect either of us. Like you just have nothing else to talk about. Like I haven't even, you're talking shit about someone I haven't even fucking seen in three years. Are you that bored? Can you, can we not say something else? Like I don't, I just got to a point where I was like, all that I'm hearing coming out of your mouth is negative about me or about other people and it's about people I don't even fucking care to hear about, do you know what I mean? Like I forgot this person existed until you came and sat in my living room and started spouting shit. So you're bringing negativity into my space, like I didn't even think about this person, yeah I don't like them either but god like I'd stop thinking about them because I don't like them. Now I'm sat here thinking bitchy thoughts about someone that I've not seen in four years like a loser. So it got to a point where I was like this, this has to stop, this person has to go. And I was so torn because I was like, Sh am I being too harsh? And the reason I thought I was being too harsh is because about four years ago, or three years ago, after my last breakup, I went on a blocking spree, basically. I cut every bitch out of my life. No one survived, right? No one made it out. I think I have three people, three close friends, uh, other than people that I was like with at uni and stuff, three close friends from like my hometown that have remained in my life closely from from that era everyone else is fucking gone and it was partly based in fear when I was doing that but it was also based in just like if you want your life to change sometimes you have to just wipe the slate clean and that's kind of how I felt I was like okay you know what I'm done. I'm done living this life. I'm done being this person. I'm done knowing these bitches. I'm out. And I blocked everyone. I got rid of everyone. And I, I, I swear to God, it made me compatible for incredible things. And sometimes that is what you need to do. Okay, sometimes situations and people, they're going to keep you stuck. And I think it is, it, it's a dangerous um scenario when you start to be fickle with your friendships because i think a lot of people be like cut people off if they're not serving you cut people off if they're not right for you and i actually really disagree and i know i probably not made it sound like that just now but i think okay here's the thing i i consider myself a pretty moral person one of my favorite things about myself is my ability to stick by my morals even in the face of like a big financial temptation let's say right it's something I respect highly about myself and something that I talk to my therapist a lot about a lot because I often need an external voice to kind of keep me in check with it otherwise you can convince yourself of a lot of things right to do a lot of things that you know you shouldn't do or say yes to or whatever promote a product that is immoral whatever why am I sounding religious whilst I do consider myself to be like a fairly moral person I did something once that was very immoral very immoral. I've spoken about this thing before. I've never said what it was. It was a very long time ago. I was like 15, 16, right? And my friends did not abandon me when I did this thing, right? And I don't know why, probably because we were all just young. I mean, if I pulled that shit now, there wouldn't be as much of an excuse because you're like, why are you doing that? You're an adult. Like, we were all teenagers and we were all in school and blah, blah, blah. Do you know what I mean? But, but my point is, people actually didn't abandon me in that moment where there was a very very valid reason to be like you don't seem like someone I want to be around do you know what I mean or you don't seem like I don't know like there, there was nothing convincing for everyone to be like well we believe that she's a good person underneath that do you know what I mean like I, I hadn't even known these people long. like there was nothing I wasn't even a long-term friend but people stuck by me and they didn't tell me that I was right in what I had done in fact they made it very clear that what I had done was wrong and I knew that but 
they they stayed my friends and they're my friends to this day they're my friends right and I love them very much and with these people I'm also particularly gracious in my head if they were to do something that I don't agree with I don't think that I would be quick to be like you're a bad person don't talk to me people make mistakes and people fuck up and the point of friendships is literally emotional support I believe right emotional support love guidance happiness joy fun those are the things that you expect to receive and give in a friendship so you can't abandon people if they do something wrong obviously if they wrong you that's one thing I also believe if they wrong someone else to a high extent it's not someone I would want to be friends with because a friend to all is a friend to none do you know what I mean but I think there's there's a very fine line or maybe it's a very clear line actually I'm not sure but I don't think abandoning people in their moments of wrongdoing is always the way to go obviously read the room read the signs what what have they done who are they as a person but I just know I am grateful for the people who stuck by me when I was wrong and so I always take that into consideration when I'm looking at a friendship I'm looking at does this serve me is this person even a good person what are their intentions and obviously you know you should be able to decide based off of who you know and who they are what the situation is I can't tell you that but I don't but I don't believe in the whole cut them off if they're not 100% serving you or whatever kind of thing I think that's fickle and that 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 mindset freaks me out also I've had people stand by me when I've been hard to be around and not joyful to be around like last time I got my heart broken Look, I'm talking about this double now just because they told me not to fucking talk about it anymore. So <laughs> the last time I got my heart broken, um, I was so hard to be around. Like I was, I've talked about this before, I was difficult for sure. I, I was acting like the whole world was out to get me. I was very depressed. I was very unhappy. I had a lot of morals that didn't make sense because I, I think in the, in the case of disorder, and something that doesn't add up to you, doesn't make sense to you, you look for order. That's a lot of why the world is the way the world is, right? Humans need order. And when something happens that proves the order that you thought existed to not exist, which is what happened to me, you seek it out ten times more. So I was implementing so many rules. I was a bit of a social justice warrior at the time. I was very like, you can't say this, you can't say this, you can't say this. I was like, there are strict rules on how to be and how to behave and if you don't follow them I'm cutting you out because I'm terrified of you because in my mind now you're just like my ex and I'm scared of you because they have kind of disintegrated the way that I thought things worked and I'm scared now and I have to have order so if you're not going to obey my order you can't be around me that was kind of what I was doing I am certain it was hard to deal with <laughs> so I I think for my friends who were a little bit more well adjusted at the time, hearing my crazy ideas about the world and the way it worked and its politics, they were probably like, this girl's fucking annoying. Like, this girl sucks. I don't want to be around her. I must have been so draining at the time to be around because I was just, I was also begging for validation constantly from everyone. Like, you couldn't shut me up. You couldn't have offered me money to shut the fuck up. I mean, you can't now, but you really couldn't then. I had to tell everyone I met what had happened. I had to beg them to tell me that I wasn't crazy because this person had made me think I was insane and all of their evil little friends had made me believe I was in the wrong. And I was, my, my brain didn't think I was. Obviously, otherwise I wouldn't have been distraught. I didn't think what I had done had warranted the reaction that I got. What I had done was broken up with them and it had got a very, very big reaction. And I didn't understand it. I couldn't understand it. I was trying to make every excuse in the book for them. I was trying to put some kind of order to what they had done, to what they were saying about me, and I couldn't, and it scared me. So I would just tell everyone and beg them for some kind of validation that I wasn't crazy and I wasn't wrong. But all they would probably sit there and think was, this girl's fucking crazy. Why is she telling me this? I met her three minutes ago. And like no one, it was, I was traumatizing all over the fucking place. You guys are lucky I did not have TikTok at the time because oh my goodness. Oh my goodness, I didn't download TikTok till 2021, I believe. Which honestly was good for me because I focused on my degree a lot more. I was a lot to deal with and my friends stuck by me. And that is something really special. And it, 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 that knowing that, that really keeps me very grounded. Because sometimes my friends will be like, 
I don't know, say they're going through a breakup and they've told me what this guy has done 500 times. I'm like, shut the fuck up, bitch. Like, I know he's wrong. He's insane. That's why you left him or that's why you need to leave him. And it's one of those things and it's like, bro, you're draining me and I don't want to have this conversation. I've told you what you need to do 500 times. We've had this conversation every time for the last three months, right? Every time we talk, it's the same thing. Stick by them because like they're, they are hard. They, like what they're dealing with sucks. It sucks. And that's what friendships are for. It's not always for your comfort right? It's not always about me. I don't always need to be the one being emotionally cared for in a relationship. I wouldn't expect it from like a romantic partner. So, you know, don't expect it from your friends. If they're not serving you, maybe you need to serve them. It's give and take, you know what I mean? If, I mean, if it's a consistent thing and they're not serving you and it's been years and you're just feeling shit and it's, you know, but I think you should, you, you, you have to weather hard times with people and I don't like this. I don't know. I just see it a lot online and it's like, I feel like we're too hasty and we're not um, compassionate enough nowadays. I definitely am guilty of doing that. And it's it's just kind of been a growing up thing for me, realising um, you can weather bad times with people and it's not a reflection of your lack of love or respect for yourself. It's more of a reflection of your love for them. You also need to know when to walk away and that's something you can only learn through trial and error, I think. I can't sit here and fucking tell you how to do it. I'm still learning, but it's hard. Like, it sucks. But I, I do think when when you remove certain blockages, certain things that are draining you, certain things that are, you know, like, for example, I had a group of friends when I was younger, like t a teenager. Someone said to me, you could be on Love Island and every all the girls in the group agreed. And I remember thinking, what the fuck? Do they think I'm pretty? Like, do they, is this like a, like, does everyone in this group think I'm cute? And I had never thought that I was their equal or really their friend. And I remember being so incredibly surprised at this like group, like, oh yeah, you know, like nodding their head thing. I was like, oh my God, like what the fuck? And this group was a big part, me not being friends with them anymore, really bolstered me up in terms of how successful I became at university and getting my degree and then and then putting myself out there into the rest of the world, whether that be socially or personally. I just flourished once I got rid of them because I realised this insane shock that I felt when they said, oh, you could be on Love Island. I realised, I think it is my natural position in this group of girls to think that I am stupid and disliked and ugly. What is that? What message is that reinforcing within myself? How am I? OK, so how am I having these friends and thinking this is where I sit with this group of people? and expecting to be successful anywhere. That can't happen, that can't fucking happen. Equally recently, I had to ask myself the same question. If I'm hanging out with someone that fucking hates me, what am I saying to myself that that's okay? That I can have friends who don't love or appreciate me or I'm not, are not happy for me when they see me succeed? No. It's also, it's, it's a huge thing, okay? How someone would mention your name in a room full of opportunities. I and this I'm not even going to say oh I have friends who wouldn't I'm going to say about myself this is a big question I ask myself on whether I even fucking like someone because I have people come in and out of my life where I'm like I like them but I don't actually like them and then I'm the toxic person who like do I actually have a friend that I fucking hate like does does my friend have a friend that hates them and is that person me and do I need to remove myself like if I think and I'm I'm in a room full of opportunities and they're artistic opportunities and I have a friend who's brilliant at art she's looking for work. Am I going to drop her name in that room or do I not want to do that? If I don't want to do that, why do I not want to do that? Has this person A wronged me or do I just not like this person? Do I feel some kind of like need to push them away? Do I resent them? Have they actually made me feel, you know, ostracized in some way? Like, why do I not want to drop their name in this room? And it's incredible because Recently in the last year, I've been in a lot of rooms full of a lot of opportunities and I have dropped name after name after name and I noticed I was never mentioning this one person and there were moments where I could have and it and the more I didn't tell people about her and it, it she wouldn't have ever expected me to right I mean if I had dropped her name in a room full of people she would have been really shocked because we're not close and she would never she wouldn't be thinking that I was going to do you know what I mean? But there, there came this day where I could have and I didn't. And I went home and I thought about it. And because, not because I felt bad, but just because I noticed that I hadn't, I hadn't tried to kind of help my friend out, right? And I didn't like that about myself. I was like, what the fuck? I went home, I thought about it, and I realised the reason I hadn't was because she hadn't reached out to me in six months. And I realised it was causing me to resent the friendship. And I kind of thought, okay, 
I think this person also resents our friendship. And I haven't spoke to them since, and it's been nearly a year. <laughs> and we've just not reached out to each other. Sometimes people both will remove themselves from the situation because it's not healthy. Other times, you're going to have to send a fat fucking paragraph, and I've done that too. So like I was saying, I think you you have to be a match with certain things for the universe to put you with them. Like, if I was still friends with the people that I used to be friends with, if I was still doing the things that I used to do, would I be a match for financial success? Fuck no. Fuck no. Would I be a match to put out this kind of podcast? No, because I wouldn't have, have ever worked on myself. I wouldn't have anything to fucking tell you. I would have nothing valuable to add. I wouldn't have anything to say. You kind of have to show the universe if you want something... It's one thing to ask for it, it's another to position yourself to receive it. And sometimes the way to position yourself to receive certain things is to change your entire fucking life. And a big way to change it is who you surround yourself with. Also think about it, birds of a feather flock together. I, I've never heard a little cliche saying that is more true. Never in my life. When I had bummy friends, I was bummy. When I had successful friends, I became successful. It's that simple. You know the saying? If you're in a room with six millionaires, you'll become the seventh. I can't think, like, I can't help but think that's correct. Because you absorb their energy. And, and, and also, more importantly, they absorb yours. So if you're around leeches and lowlifes who need energy from other people because A, they're not giving it to themselves, and B, they're not in a position for, like, abundance to flow into their lives from the universe because what the fuck are they doing to receive it? They're not in the right positioning. They're going to leech off of you and any goodness and any greatness that you have, any potential is just going to kind of get siphoned. You need to fucking leave. You need to leave. And I think in a lot of situations as well that like bummy ass relationships that you have at uni or whatever that, that just stress you the fuck out and you're with someone who's not emotionally developed because everyone's in their 20s and everyone's probably a mess or you're 19, you're 20, you're 21 bro who are you dating like i don't okay maybe that maybe that's gonna upset people because a lot of people will be in relationships with someone they genuinely love and look me too but so like i've also been in the opposite and i think if you even have an inkling of doubt you're too young to waste your potential because it is sucking it from you like i can't say that any less brutally if you're in a situation that isn't fulfilling and it's taking a lot from you and you're young, come on. You're never going to be this young again. So, I don't know. I don't know. Also, I don't believe in ghosting. I think if, if you have a friend that you realise you need to cut off, that you're not compatible with or that is draining you, I, I don't believe in ghosting unless, I don't know, the person is like insane or something. If you're talking with like... A relatively normal, well-adjusted person. I don't think that ghosting is ever the way because, okay, here's the thing. Everything is about you. Don't worry about other people, right? If you're ghosting someone, don't, okay, worry about how it's going to make them feel. Also, worry about what it says about you. What message, it's constantly the question, what are you reinforcing to yourself? If you ghost someone, if you ghost someone, you've chosen the easy option, okay? Maybe you've even hurt their feelings a little bit less than giving them a paragraph on why you don't like them. But you've given yourself the message that you're fucking lame and you don't like confrontation and you don't respect people's feelings very much. You don't respect their peace. I believe that everyone deserves to know what is going on in their own life. And it's, it's I mean, obviously I fucking disagree with cheating, but it's one of the things that always comes to my mind when I think, why does it make me so angry when people fucking lie? Obviously it makes everyone angry, but like the best word I can put to it is like, I deserve to know my own life fucking story. How can you take that from me? I would rather be in pain. I would rather be distraught. I would rather be on the ground crying and throwing up than have someone else think that they have the power or the position to make me think I've lived a life that I haven't lived. If, if something has happened that affects me, you've cheated on someone, you've kissed someone, you've done something with somebody, and you make the executive decision to not tell me, fuck you. Fuck you, because I deserve to know what happens in my life. I deserve, if I deserve to at least have the chance to heal from it. How can you not fucking tell me? That's sick in the head. <laughs> sick in the head. I hate liars. Bro, I hate people that keep stuff from people. I would rather shatter your heart than lie to you. 
I really would. And I had this discussion with my friend once. They were saying that they had had a friend break up with their partner because they had cheated on them, but they were going to break up with them anyways. And they thought, just like, I'm going to save her the trust issues and save her the heartbreak. And my friend had basically said, I actually think that's the more humane thing to do. Like the relationship was, was going to finish anyway. He didn't touch her after he cheated on someone else. You know what I mean? Like he didn't breach those kinds of lines. So he just saved her the turmoil. And I thought, fuck. Additionally, that person should have the opportunity to fucking hate you. Also, they should have the chance to reflect on the relationship that they had with someone who ended up cheating on them and be able to um, keep those red flags in mind next time. What did you not like about that person? Because you need to take it more seriously. Like, maybe you thought it was a bad relationship, but it wasn't awful. No, it was awful, actually. They did cheat on you, and here's what you shouldn't put up with the next time because maybe you're in a next relationship they do some of the things your ex-partner did you think okay well he wasn't an awful guy yeah he fucking was he just never fucking told you i don't know i'm getting angry now but i don't know i think that you i think everyone in your life deserves transparency from you even if you have fucked up and it's gonna hurt you to tell them i'm sorry you shouldn't have fucked up then should you and yeah it sucks but i just i just think it's it's always the way to go if you don't want to be friends with someone anymore if you don't want them in your life offer them the reason why I think that's the least you can do. If they are the one that is fucking you over and that's why you don't want them in your life, I still think that they should have the chance to know. I still think they should understand. And at the very least, it might make them grow or it might make them hate you. Neither of which is your problem because they're out of your life. Guys, look at the fucking dog. She is such a good girl. Okay. Um, I think that is really all I have to say on the matter for now. I hope you guys like this one. Um, let me know what you want to talk about next week. And um, yeah, that's it, I guess. Thanks for listening. Um, I hope I haven't said anything wrong. I feel like lately I've said a lot of things that people don't agree with. But I guess that's what, ha that's what happens when you put your opinion on the internet. <laughs> okay. Love you guys so much. Thanks for listening. If you got this far, I love you. 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 I still haven't fixed my flat tire, by the way, so I'm just going to go back inside my house now. Love you, bye.